Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Samuel Sennett from Portland State University and I want to speak with you about writing a research proposal. So <laughs> the steps in the process, um, these are um, steps that can be really exciting and so you can start out with brainstorming or empathizing. We like to use design thinking in our research lab as a way to um, guide this process. Um, and, and this empathy step in the design thinking is, is really great. Um, we may get out there and observe, talk to people, um, reflect, but we want to identify um, and, and really boil down a gap or a topic or a problem statement. And, and in step two, we're going to refine that into a research question or some sort of project aim. Um, we're going to be doing literature review. We want to stand on the shoulders of giants. We want to synthesize that literature reviewing into something cohesive that scaffolds our argument or supports our project plan. We want to develop a, a very specific plan that will uh, meet that set of goals or aims that we refined down in, in steps one and two. And then we want to, um, of course, uh, implement and, and do the project and, and then analyze the data and, and state the findings, conclusions, and recommendations. And, um, you know, you, you have that process, and we've talked about it now almost to death and paralleled it to the uh, scientific method. Um, and we think about this qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods research. Well, we can uh, propose research. And, and some of the reasons why we propose research, um, one is to get uh, feedback. Um, another is to do good planning and get ready to conduct a research study. And then also we propose research to ask for funding to support our plan. And um, this can't be understated enough that, that your proper planning can really prevent poor performance. And the research proposal can specify and limit your topic. It can be driven by these research questions. It can provide justification. And you see in the proposal outline and, and documentation, the uh, approach that I'm uh, teaching you, um, it really helps you justify the reason for your study and shows that lit review or existing research and methodology for, um, you know, here we're talking about sampling, but it's really from participant selection to data collection and analysis. And, um, you know, th this, uh, you know, why, why even do it? Why not just dive in? Well, um, there's a lot of moving parts, and, and by taking the time to do this design work or proposal work, um, it can help um, you prepare to implement. And then um, it also is your, your map to your final report. Um, and this process, as you're probably seeing, through even just proposing a topic, it has its own inherent value. When you go start to look for literature and you start reading, it's, it's intellectually stimulating. So... Um, Another last item is it, it may be required that you propose your research to get approval for, say, human subjects research. So um, lots of good reasons. Um, and then at the high level, um, you, you've got an introduction, and, and people do this differently. So, so it's people can be very dogmatic. Um, I'm giving you a very opinionated uh, format for your proposal because... Um, I, I've been studying the, the process and, and really being reflective on trying to learn how to win grants and, and do proposal project proposals. Um, I, I think that there is a, a real art and, and science to it. Um, but, but you want to introduce the topic, give background knowledge, be really clear about the purpose provide great rationale and justification, and then specify what your aims or research questions are. Um, your methods should be very clear and um, well described. And 
that's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, the the concepts of quantitative proposals versus qualitative proposals. Th this is c pretty interesting. Um, so, so a quantitative proposal, it's, it's like your project plan. It's usually very, very well structured. Um, and then in contrast, a qualitative study may um, be a, very exploratory. And so it may start out with um, kind of less clarity, but, but it still has to articulate what the focus is and what the inquiry is and how you'll get there. Um, but it just may allow for that ebb and flow and exploration process. Um, and, and it may also make sense for a qualitative proposal to cite or, or have some preliminary data collection to kind of propose somewhere in the middle of the cycle. Um, and so showing some of these components, um, this is you know, similar. Um, the, the, the concept we haven't talked a lot about is limitations. Um, you're going to want to describe not only what you think is going to happen and why your proposal is so great, but what are the potential limitations? What are the risks in, in what you're doing? Um, what is going to be hard to get at? Um, it's good to be upfront about this because readers and reviewers of proposals, they're going to know or they're going to be thinking about this and you can start to anticipate it. And by you describing it, it lets you uh, control the narrative over that. Um, so thanks for listening to this brief introduction around proposals. And I know you're getting a lot with the proposal documentation. Um, so I just wish you the best in your proposal writing. Um, and this was just a quick little intro to it.